What's up everyone, and wow, it's been a while since my last upload on YouTube. If you're interested in learning more about what I've been up to this past year, I'll cover that at the end of the video, but I thought what better way to get back into creating more videos for YouTube than to do an update to two of my more popular videos which covered running Google Ads for e-commerce, specifically for Shopify and Amazon. Through scaling my own e-commerce business over this past year, I've changed and I've optimized the way I set up my ad groups and set up my campaigns. I found it delivers the same great results I'm looking for while also being much easier to set up and optimize. When you watch YouTube videos on Google ads, you usually see one of two things. One, they take all the keywords and they dump them into one ad group. And usually this is because they're not really experienced running Google ads. They probably just saw another video and they did that in that video and they're just kind of copying it for their own video or two, they're just being lazy for the video. Now this method can work out okay, but it doesn't give you an advantage over other advertisers. The second method you see a lot is single keyword ad groups, also known as SCAGs. Now SCAGs is what I covered inside of my previous two Google Ads videos. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you can watch those videos after this one. But honestly, I think what I'm gonna be covering here is even better than that. First though, it's important to understand why running single keyword ad groups gives you an advantage over other advertisers. When you're advertising, Google gives your ads a quality score. And part of what they base that quality score on is how relevant your ads are to the person that's searching. And when you're doing one keyword per ad group, you're able to write super relevant ads for the person that's searching, resulting in a higher quality score. If you're interested in learning more about quality score or ad rank, Google has a ton of documentation on it that you can check out. But the important point to understand is that the better your quality score, the cheaper your ad clicks, and the better placement you can get. Your ad's performance is not just based on the bid. If that was the case, the advertiser that was bidding the most would always place highest, and that's not the way it works out. You can be bidding less than your competitors, but if Google views your ad as being more relevant to the person that's searching, they can actually place you higher even with that lower bid. And that's a very key point to understand if you want to improve your ad performance. But single keyword ad groups does have its disadvantages. It's very complicated to learn and build to do properly, and it's very time consuming to set up and optimize. And as an entrepreneur, you don't want to be spending all your time inside of your ad account. There's tons of other tasks you could be doing to help you grow your business. So that brings us to my current ad group setup, and that is themed keyword ad groups. What that means is taking the relevant keywords for my product, looking at the similarities between the keywords and also taking into consideration the intent of the person that is searching and grouping them based on those themes. For example, if I'm selling a toothpaste, I'll look at all the keywords related to teeth whitening and group those together. That could be teeth whitening toothpaste, it could be uh, toothpaste for teeth whitening, whitening toothpaste for women, any of those type of keywords that would go together related to teeth whitening. Then I'll look at something like uh, maybe preventing cavities. Any keywords that have to do with preventing cavities, I'll put together in an ad group. And any keyword that has to do with preventing plaque buildup, I'll put in another ad group. But you can see I'm grouping the keywords based on their similarities as well as the intent of the person that's searching. This allows me to still write relevant ad copy for the person that's searching, while also not being as complicated and time consuming as the SCAG, single keyword ad groups. And don't worry, I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of this in just a second. If you're enjoying the content so far, please take a second to like the video. And if you don't wanna miss my next upload, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well. And let's just get right into it. All right, I wanted to do a walkthrough of keyword research and how to put those keywords into the individual ad groups. So for this, I'm just gonna use a test product. Uh, I picked out a barbecue grill tool set, which is a set, looks like this. It's a set of tools, uh, has a different uh, accessories and things like that inside of it for grilling, makes a really good gift and, and can be pretty popular over the holidays and during the summer. Now there's a lot of tools and software available out there that you can use to uh, look up keywords, but honestly the Google Keyword Planner for free that you can use inside of your ad account is perfectly fine to find pretty much all the relevant keywords that you need. What I like to do is start off with a couple seed keywords to get some good relevant keyword lists from the Google Keyword Planner. Uh, but if you really don't know, here's a tip, is if you don't know what those keywords are, go to Amazon and look at the listings and look into the first parts of their title. Amazon sellers will often put their most relevant or most highest search volume keywords up inside of their title. So we can see here we have like grilling accessories, grill tool set. Uh, we have barbecue grill tool set. Uh, barbecue grill accessories, things like that. So I could pull out those seed keywords and use those if I wasn't sure of what one would be. And so we go here, get search results, and it will pull up here a list of keywords that we can use. 
So I'm going all the way down to the bottom here. We have about 515 different keywords. Now, there's actually something that Google started adding, which I think is really cool and super useful to use. And that is right over here, you'll see refine keywords. So if you click on that, they have the different refinements that you can do for the keywords. So uh, I like to go down here, non-brand. I like to get rid of all keywords that contain name brands because if someone's searching for a name brand, more often than not, they want that name brand. They're not gonna go and select your product instead. So I like to get rid of branded keywords. And then also as well, if you're doing a Shopify store, oftentimes you don't want to bid on keywords that have other retailers in it because if someone's searching Amazon, for example, they wanna buy on Amazon in probably about 99% of the cases. Now, if you're an Amazon seller and you're running ads to your Amazon listing, you probably do wanna keep these Amazon keywords inside of there. Uh, but for these purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and filter that out, uh, filter out these other brands as well. Now, this is a really good one here is they have materials. So uh, they picked up that there's some sets that have, they're made out of wood or some sets that are stainless steel. So if your uh, barbecue grill set is made out of stainless steel, you'd probably wanna get rid of wood and other and uh, vice versa. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep those there because this is just a demo product, but uh, you could narrow that down. Actually, let's just take these out. Let's just narrow it down to stainless steel. And then come down here, I'm gonna get rid of stuff that has to do with grill cleaning and others. I just wanna focus on keywords that are super relevant uh, to my product. So go ahead and get rid of those. And what that does, I'm gonna scroll down here. So that took us from about 500 keywords all the way down to a little less than 300 keywords. Now, when you're starting a brand new campaign, what I recommend is starting anywhere, could be five keywords, all the way up to maybe about 500 keywords. But if you're just starting out, I like to start with somewhere uh, 100 keywords or less because I like to start with the most relevant keywords and then I can always expand out uh, later from there, but I want the highest search volume and the most relevant keywords to begin with. So usually that's less than 100, could be less than 50, anything like that. And what I'll do is I'll come down here and I'll just go ahead and select out keywords that are relevant uh, to my product. I'm just picking random ones here. And then you can come over here and hit copy. You can copy those keywords and put them to a spreadsheet. Or if you just wanna make it easy and grab all the keywords, then you can come down here to uh, download, uh, download uh, keyword ideas, select Google Sheets, or if you just wanna download it into a CSV spreadsheet, you can do that as well. And then you'll have all the keywords. And this is what it will look like if you download it into a spreadsheet. Now, not all of these are important to me, all these columns. So usually what I'll do is I'll get rid of these first two rows. I'll get rid of rows like currency. Uh, for me, the most important is just the keyword itself as well as the average monthly searches. Now, this is just an empty ad account that I'm using for this example, but if you're running ads, this info would be much more detailed and that info becomes available once you start running ads. So if you have an active ads account, your info will already be more uh, detailed. And if you're just starting to run ads for the first time, once you start running ads, this uh, search volume will become more detailed, but it's perfectly fine right now just to go ahead and get started with. So don't worry too much about it. Then what I like to do is I'll go through here and I'll just start getting rid of keywords that are not relevant to my product. So for example, this could be this uh, kebab grilling baskets. So that's not really relevant to my product. I'll delete that one out. If my barbecue set is not a personalized barbecue set, I'll delete this uh, things like that out. Real cleaning kit, you could maybe keep that one, maybe not, it's up to you. But I just like to keep the most important, most irrelevant ones, uh, most relevant ones, and then I'll start grouping them based on the themes that we talked about earlier. So just looking through these keywords, uh, there's a couple of different ways you could separate them, but I think I'm gonna separate these keywords based on what they're calling the set. So I noticed that some people are calling them utensils, some people are calling them tools, and some people are just calling them accessories. So I'm gonna separate it based on those ad groups. And this is what it will end up looking like. I'll put the theme up here, and then I have my uh, keywords separated by theme. You'll notice here that all these keywords have utensil inside of them, all these ones have a uh, tool, and all of these have accessories. Now, this doesn't have to be exactly precise, so don't you know stress over it too much. You can uh, break these up into whatever themes that you want. You could get extremely detailed. Maybe you wanna break these down into 10 different ad groups. Or if you mistakenly put one keyword from tools into accessories and vice versa, it doesn't really matter that much, okay? The important thing is you're generally getting these themes. So when you write your ad copy, you're able to write really relevant uh, ads still to the person that's searching. And when I'm writing my ads, what I like to do is I like to include at least one of these keywords 
inside of my ad copy in the main title at the beginning of the ad. So usually what I'll do is I'll pick the one that has the most search volume and I'll pick that one to start with and then I'll pick one or two other ones to use as a split test in a different uh, ad copy. And then you can also work in these uh, keyword phrases in other parts of the ad copy if you want to. You can maybe even in your accessories, you can then also work in some of these tools or utensils down inside the ad copy. Uh, but the rest of it is up to you. I just like to include the uh, in the main title one of these important keywords for the uh, ad group. That way it's still really relevant to the person that's searching. And then you can include things like features, benefits, anything like that. And then just to give some quick tips on ad copy, like I said, you wanna make sure that the first headline includes one of your keywords from your themed ad group. And then you can also put that keyword in the display URL section. And then the rest is really up to you. Pick up some uh, benefits, call to actions, uh, features, anything like that. And when you're doing a split test, you wanna make sure that you have your split test is different enough. If you're just changing one word, that's not really enough of a difference to make the split test worth it. So you wanna make sure that the ad is different enough uh, to do that. So what I'll do is I'll pick out one of the keywords to use in the first headline, and then I'll pick out some other keywords to use as well uh, in the split test. And you can also change up the features, benefits, and things like that. Uh, this was an example of a ad I thought was pretty good. I just searched a random uh, keyword on Google. So I searched leather dog collars, and this pulled up. You can see here that they put leather dog collars right in the front. And that makes the ad super relevant to me and more likely to click on it because they're saying in their ad exactly what I'm looking for. And they just added some other things here like uh, features, benefits, uh, call outs, and things like that. So that was a good thing to show to give you an example of an ad. And then just to quickly run through some campaign settings, I'm not gonna cover every single setting. I don't want this to turn into a super long video, but I'm just gonna cover some important ones because there are some slight changes from when I last made this video. So. Uh, when setting up, I don't like to select, I like to select no goal. Uh, that way I can just set up everything myself when you're creating the new campaign. And then coming through here, when creating the campaign, I like to deselect or unselect the display network. Uh, make sure you put in your location. Uh, for budget, that really just depends on your budget and what you're doing for the product. If you're you know, an experienced advertiser and you have a large budget, you know, you could go really high. If you're just starting out, you might start somewhere at $25 or $50 uh, per day. And then for the bidding, I like to do manual PPC. So you can come in here, you'll have to change. They'll start with a different bid strategy. So you have to actually change it to manual CPC. But the reason why I like to do manual CPC is because it gives me a good baseline for my other things I'm gonna try out. So I'll, I'll definitely at some point, I'll end up trying out some of these other automated bid strategies. Cause who knows, maybe Google can do better than I can with their bid strategy. But starting with manual CPC gives me a way to tell if they're doing better or if they're doing worse and give me a baseline for it. So I recommend testing these out, but start with manual CPC. And then for ad groups, this is a little bit different than how I did it in my previous video. Uh, one, you can just name the ad group after your ad group theme, so you know what keywords are in there. Uh, for bid, you can just select whatever you want, maybe 75 cents, 50 cents, a dollar, something like that. It'll depend on your product, your category, how competitive it is, but you can always optimize it from that point. Uh, but what is different is, in my previous video, I started out with exact match, phrase match and broad match modifier all in the same uh, all at the same time. Now when I'm starting a new campaign, I like to start with just exact match and then from there once uh, I have a you know the campaign's running and doing well and I'm ready to scale out, then I'll add in the phrase match and the broad match mod modifier from there. And then for the ads, Google's always adding things, uh, adding new things in here. And one of the new things they're adding is responsive search ads. So to give what that's kind of similar, if you've never used those before, and I recommend reading up on the help docs on it so you can understand them, but they're kind of similar to dynamic ads uh, in the Facebook, uh, for Facebook ads, where you put in a bunch of headlines, a bunch of ad copy, and Google will choose which one uh, they think is you know, best and, and they'll try different combinations and then they'll optimize on which ones are performing best. But if you wanna keep it simple and you just wanna use standard text ads, you can select to go back to the text ads and then just create the text ads uh, just like you normally would. I think you'll really enjoy these changes that I did with doing the themed ad groups and just starting with the exact match to begin with. And it will make it a lot easier when you're running your campaigns and hopefully improve your ad performance. Now, before we end off here, I wanted to give an update of what I've been up to for the past 12 months. If you're not aware of what's been going on in the world for the past year, you've probably been living under a rock, but most of you are probably aware of what's been going on. Now, fortunately for me, 
This resulted in a huge increase in demand and sales for my e-commerce business. And I just wanted to take the opportunity to capitalize on it. And I received a lot of messages in places like Instagram for people asking when I'd be back and making more videos. And honestly, that type of stuff is what made me want to come back and make more videos. When I first started out, I was just doing it for fun, just wanted to put out some good content. Wasn't sure if anyone's gonna be watching it, but seeing that people actually enjoyed the content and then also wanted me to make more or wondering when I was gonna make more, that just inspired me to come back and want to do it more. And I just wanted to say that I really appreciated it. Did you enjoy the video? Don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you, and I'll see you in the next one.